Hi friends and welcome. By the time you see this, I'm pretty certain another firearms deer opener in the great state of Michigan is going to be in the books. And judging by some of the social media pics I've been getting, some of you have a lot to celebrate. We sent out a bunch of our youngsters this year for opening day and let them try their hand. And I have to say that hit or miss, I'm pretty certain it's going to be one to remember. And speaking of remembering, I truly hope to see some of you pictures and stories up at our Outfitter Expo up there in Cadillac this January. I look forward to hearing all your stories, how it all went. Certainly bring the family, that's what this is all about. Now, as promised, let's head out to the woods. It's opening morning and we have got young people all over Central and West Michigan. And they saw, I guess what you'd say would be mixed results. Hey, I'm your host, Kyle Randall. This is my Wilderness Journal, and we're going out for the opener right now. We'll start with Ian, the grandson with the broken leg. Ian and Uncle Rob. And Camera Kai are all in a local blind and just after daylight. More does come down the field. Black bell two fawns. And he handles a buck. <laughs> hey, there's two more out the field. Three hmm? more. Some are standing down here by that pump house, that white building. Yeah, I got it. I'm not just shooting, I'm just zooming in to see. They're out there. There's a number of deer out in this field in a couple of places, but most of them are quite a ways off and standing right on the edge of a little hill. Ian made a wise choice. He was driving what, that's the name of the rifle, the nearly identical younger brother of my rifle, Old Whisper. But even with that 270 Weatherby, it was wise not to try a shot that far and certainly not over the rise of a hill out in an open field. He was just gonna have to wait for a better chance. And speaking of waiting, at the same time, his sister Kate was out in a blind near the edge of a swamp and she was waiting on a chance of her own, and I can assure you any deer she saw, well, it was already gonna be within range. Kate sat there in the gathering light, watching the edges of the swamp, waiting, waiting for enough light to see, waiting for that moment. And waiting's pretty hard, unless something shows up. And just after a shot from one of the other guys hunting with us. Get your gun. There she stopped. She's looking at her decoy. A lone doe came running down through the pines and stopped to stare at our decoy. She stood for just a few seconds and then walked off down into the swamp. Kate kept watching, but she never did work her way around. There didn't seem to be any buck following her, so all we could do was keep watching. You see how they just pop up? I thought I just heard one. Did you just hear some running over there? Yeah, I did. And like I said, waiting, well, it can be pretty hard. Seeing any? No. Oh. 
things had been a little bit slow for Kate, but she was doing better than Kyle Jr. was. He was in a blind in another part of the state and he was starting the opener yeah, pretty much the same way he does every year. In his defense, Kyle Jr. did wake up in time to notice it had been snowing. But yeah, he did look kind of surprised by it. Friends, Kyle hadn't seen much yet but the inside of his eyelids and some snowflakes, but Kate was seeing a few. We were still on the edge of the swamp. You still hear it? And Kate could hear something coming down the hill behind the blind. Right there. And then a mature doe stepped out right in front of us. Unfortunately, there didn't seem to be any buck following her, at least not yet. But I whispered to Kate, just hang on. She's checking it out. If she works her way out, maybe he's just standing back in there waiting. For the moment, this doe seemed to be captivated by our decoy, but I knew as those moments drug on, they had to feel like hours to Kate. There she goes. Yeah, she's, oh, it's just starting to go back in. She's not going far. No. Nope. And then, and then she just left. She ain't going anywhere. She's turned went back down the hole. Unfortunately, there wasn't any buck following that doe. We had no doe tag for that area. Kate was just gonna have to keep waiting on that chance. And speaking of chances, up in Harrison, Michigan, young Tommy Dewey was about to get one of his own and when it showed up, well, let's just say he was gonna have to make a decision. Just after daylight, deer were working their way up underneath Tommy's stand. Already on the gun, Tommy was ready. And when the does look back, well, let's just say Tommy knows enough to look back, too. The spike buck stopped just short of Tommy's shooting lane, and he just stood there. Sniffing and looking around the area, he wasn't really following the does. He was just kind of standing off watching. And I'm sure it seemed like hours to Tommy, but he just stood there. And then finally, he started to move. And when this spike buck followed those does right up into Tommy's wheelhouse, right up underneath his stand, well, then he was going to have to decide. Still going to pass. And when Tom Sr. asked him, was he going to still pass this buck? Well, let's just say his lips said yes, but that's not what I saw in his eyes. Tommy had decided to pass that spike. He'd keep waiting for a little older buck, 
and fortunately it wasn't long before there were a few more deer starting to work their way past his stand. There was another group of does and yearlings working their way through one of Tommy's shooting lanes. And when the last, an adult doe stopped and just started picking and eating a little bit and then picked her head up and looked back, well, like I said. You see him? This one antlered buck worked his scrape and then finally stepped out. What do you think? Just has one horn. Yeah. Pass for right now. Yes, friends. The eyes are the windows to the deer hunter's soul, too. That one antlered three point without any tail? Well, he'd be easy enough to recognize if he made it through to next year, and young Tommy was more than happy to wait, and Tom Sr. decided along about lunch, I guess, it was time for a change. He and his wife Kim would trade hunters, and this afternoon, Mitchell was gonna get to go hunting with dear old dad. All right, Mitchie, we traded hunters. Tommy went with mommy, and you're here with me, right? Mm-hmm. We gonna see something this afternoon, maybe? Uh-huh. Mitchie is Tommy's younger brother, and just like his older brother, it wasn't long before he was watching deer working their way past his stand. Mitchell, what's all that? A doe and two fawns worked their way through, and then later, as it really began to snow, a few more deer started working in. Mitchell saw a couple of does and a fawn work through, and then he saw something else. There was a spike buck standing down in one of his shooting lanes. Mitchell was up and had the rifle on the little buck. And unlike his older brother Tommy, he'd never shot a deer before. So this, well, I reason this might be just a little bit tougher choice. And then when the spike moved even closer. Keep your hand off the trigger until you're ready, okay? I was pretty certain I could feel the tension all the way over here. And then as the little buck started to move off, it was clear there needed to be a decision. And it needed to be now.
decision made. Mitchell just stood and watched as that little buck worked his way out into the snow. No matter who the young hunter, there seemed to be a lot of young deer running around over there on Tom's property, but both of the boys, Tommy and Mitchie, had decided they were gonna hold out, wait, and see if something better came along. And fortunately, just before dark, as the snow started to pile up, something did. Just before dark, Mitchell could see antlers working their way up one of the shooting lanes. This was obviously a little better buck, but he obviously needed to get a little closer before Mitchell would even consider a shot. Can you get him in? In all the snow, Mitchell was having some trouble getting a deer lined up, and on top of that, there was a few tree limbs in the way, and another deer had worked its way in there. Things were getting pretty tense up in Mitchie's blind, and then, and then they just walked off with no clear shot and to be honest a little bit too much distance to that deer Mitchie was gonna have to wait he'd just have to sit it out and hope for a better chance and speaking of sitting and hoping for a better chance Kate decided for the afternoon she wanted to move to a ladder stand and I thought with the snow coming down like this Kate and I sat there as the snow intensified and I was pretty sure even this squirrel thought we were nuts Fortunately, it wasn't long before. See it? I can't. You can see his head. Is it a buck or no? Watch it. It's a doe. Through the swirling snow, there was a young doe, looked like maybe a fawn or just a youngster, working her way right down off the hill right at us. I don't know why she was coming right to us, but she was definitely coming. In fact, she walked right up under our blind, not 10, 12 feet, and just stood there. She was looking at something just in front of her on the ground. I couldn't tell. She certainly wasn't looking at us. Not until we made a little crunching noise anyway. That close enough for you? Yeah, straight down. That was close. You need a little closer. No. But he's shooting straight down. Yeah. We just need a buck to do that. And then, just after she ran, we saw... It was one of Tom Dewey's stray cats that little doe had been staring at. Tom's lost cats. Think it'll snow? I can't feel like it, guys. 30%. 35%. Yeah, maybe a 40% chance of snow. Hey, that's as good as most of the weather guessers. Damn. And then... Through that 40% chance of snow, Kate picked out another deer working its way across in front of us. This too looked like a young doe. We kept an eye on her, hoping maybe a buck would be following this one. I think it's a doe. See if something's following. Unfortunately, that was the last deer Kate saw on opening day. Sometimes, well, I guess sometimes, the deer got to win. Opening day ain't over yet. We were all seeing some deer, and judging by what I was hearing, some of the members of our extended family were doing pretty good. In fact, some of the picks were already starting to roll in. I will say, though, as it started to get later, we weren't hearing a lot from our immediate group of youngsters. 
But that's not to say we didn't get any shooting. Remember Ian, the young man with the broken leg in the box blind close to home? Well, it wasn't like he didn't get any chances. A mature doe had worked its way out in front of Ian's blind. He was watching, waiting to see if a buck might be following. Oh, we got another one. That, that's a point. Unfortunately, there didn't seem to be one. On the upside, for Ian anyway, that wouldn't be a deal breaker. He did have a doe tag. Yes. That, yeah, that's a deal breaker. <laughs> what was that? It's just, you know, probably missed a high. It was pretty far out and I thought I had it, but it must have been a little too high. A little pre-morning jitters. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. The opener of Michigan's 2018 firearms deer season, at least for our young guns. And it turned out, well, pretty much like I said, there were some chances, some choices, and it wound up mixed. As for you, after seeing some of your social media stuff, I'm thinking quite a few of you had a good opener. And I have to tell you, I'm really looking forward to hearing your stories, hit or miss, up at our Outfitters Expo up there in Cadillac, Michigan this January. I hope you take the time to come and tell me how your deer season went. I hope grandma, the dog, everybody comes along. You know, everybody in the Wilderness Journal family, everybody we do business with, the outfitters, the guides, all of the businesses, everybody will be there. It's like a great big family reunion. And we certainly hope to see some of you up there. Friends, if you don't get the chance, well, then I promise I'll be waiting on you. Maybe we'll bump into you out in the field somewhere and we can stop and share that cup and a fire. And if we don't get the chance to do that, well, then I'll wait for you right back here so we can share another adventure from my Wilderness Journal.